we believe the automotive industry will change more in the next 10 years than it has in the last 100. 100 years ago, there was this great competition among the different fuels and the different ways of manufacturing. Today, we're talking about non-carbon fuels. We're talking about non-combustion engines. We're really looking mostly at the hydrogen, the hydrogen economy, and we're going to be seeing it in different classes. We have a joint venture with BMW. We're also working with them on fuel cell, and we'll be seeing fuel cells actually coming in industrial products too. Um, forklift trucks will be uh, very popular, and you see it in uh, stationary power. So we're beginning to see the early stages of the hydrogen economy. So with the electric vehicle, you have charging overnight, and you have limited range and there are issues associated with the ability to fully charge or, or not fully discharge a battery and the battery life. In the case of our fuel cell, uh, we go 440 miles. Uh, we can operate at high temperatures and low temperatures while below freezing. Uh, so more temperature uh, variance is possible uh, with the fuel cell. The refueling is similar to gasoline, so it takes three or four minutes. Uh, so you don't have the over char uh, overnight charging implications. So, and it's very good uh, when it's applied to even larger vehicles. In the case of electric vehicle, electric batteries, it's difficult to make uh, in Americans like larger vehicles, uh, very large electric vehicles. So we, we really have a framework in our mind that electric vehicles are good for urban areas, tight urban communities with short distances, and that fuel cell vehicles are best for larger vehicles and people who need to go more, more distances. We have hydrogen tanks, and it, you combine hydrogen and oxygen, and they operate together in the fuel cell, and the electricity is what drives the motor and what drives the uh, car itself. And the output is water vapor. One of the biggest challenges we face is getting the infrastructure started. It's very difficult in our industry to move away from gasoline to a whole new fuel format. And the investment in the fuel is something normally done by the fuel suppliers. So um, we're trying to work with the states of California and other, and other suppliers around the country to start developing the hydrogen infrastructure. And that's probably the biggest challenge we face right now in the launch of the vehicle, to make sure the fuel is available when the cars are available. If you look at, in terms of what's the build out of infrastructure and the diversity of fuels, yeah, we will see a diversity of fuels. Uh, every region of the world has somewhat different fuels. You'll see CNG in Italy, you'll see CNG somewhere in South America, and you'll, you'll see different fuels. Um, but in terms of clean fuels, uh, sustainable fuels, it's really the, the fuel cell and the electric vehicle are the two key. So looking towards 2050, uh, you'll see the fleet in California be both either electric or fuel cell. As most technologies, it takes 10 or 15, 20 years sometimes to really get them to their peak. So uh, five years ago, our systems were um, well over a million dollars a vehicle. They were still in the research lab. And we've been able to improve them in almost every dimension. Uh, the catalyst has much less platinum. The temperature performance, the durability, uh, the vehicles last for 10 years. Uh, fuel cell is now ready for market. And it will be globally distributed. And we, we believe it is actually the car of the future. Thank <laughs> you.